Well, it seems like the hot back summer is also going to mean a hot hard seltzer summer. We are still seeing rapid growth in that category. So let's talk about who may be the big winners there. Laurent Grandet is joining us now. He's a managing director and lead consumer staples research analyst at Guggenheim Partners. Um, Laurent, it's good to see you. So as you're, according to your research that you've been doing, what's, what are the most popular drinks in the category right now? And what's the, the capacity and the potential throughout this summer? Yeah, so right now, I mean, White Crow is still the lead, leading brand in, in sensor, and, uh, uh, but they are kind of going down in terms of market share. The leading uh, kind of the, 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 the brand that is uh, actually the hottest right now is Truly, uh, as they have been uh, launching in what we call bolder flavors, like lemonade a year ago, uh, tea at the beginning of the year, and more recently, punch. So we think Truly will, uh, will catch up on White Crow, I mean, uh, closing the gap. Uh, not entirely, but uh, um, breaching the 30% market share this year, uh, this summer. And, and White Claw will slightly go down in a higher studies. But uh, White Claw first, we uh, second, but really truly is the hot brand right now. Laurent, all, all these new uh, hard seltzers and now even increasingly hard teas, is that coming at the expense of, of certain areas of the beer market? Yeah, so uh, we, we did a, a big piece of work about uh, uh, that we published about three weeks ago, what we call at Guggenheim, a 360 deep dive. Uh, and what we are seeing is that about 60% of, uh, of the cellular consumption is coming from beer. Uh, and about half of that is coming from, uh, you know, light beer. Uh, and the rest, I mean, are more craft and, uh, and, and, and imports. But uh, yes, 60% is coming from beer. Uh, about uh, about 10% coming from spirits, about 10, uh, 10 15% from uh, from white wine, mostly, and the rest is really uh, more incremental. You know, Laurent, if you go back in time, 10, 15 years, it was all about how are these big beer companies going to uh, deal with the, the craft trend. As you think about craft's position within consumption, has that grown? Has that trend faded? Is seltzer replacing it? I mean, I know you mentioned that a lot of this comes from, from light beer consumption is going to seltzer, but what is the state of these craft investments, which have been sizable for so many of these um, you know, major, major spirits uh, makers? Yeah, so uh, it's interesting because in craft, I mean, you could look at the, the business in different ways. I and mean, if you include the big craft brands like uh, uh, Blue Moon or uh, Sam Adams, only, I mean, the craft beer in retail has been growing. Now, what is interesting is that most of the craft beer were sold in, uh, you know, in tap rooms and, uh, and on premise, and those were closed. So you had a lot of smaller regional brands that just disappeared. I mean, they didn't have the financial backbone to stay. So what we are seeing now in retail is, is actually in the, all those smaller craft beer as, are disappearing, and the shelf space is offered to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Celser. Uh, so craft seems to be doing well in retail, but it's really driven by by Blue Moon and Lagunitas uh, and those brands that are, I mean, really not as crafty as you would consider. One thing that I think is interesting to, to note here is craft came with uh, lots of flavor, but also, I mean, uh, usually a higher ABV, uh, alcohol content, uh, which, which kind of um, reduced the ability for drinkers I mean, to drink I mean, as much probably as, as they were doing before with light beer. Seltzer being just five degrees of alcohol on, in general, um, what we see in our, we saw in our, in our research is that uh, consumers are inclined to drink more of those uh, in one shot. So that's increased, if you want, the volume of, uh, of beer, if you include seltzer into it, um, uh, and for the first time for quite, quite a long time. Craft, higher ABV, I mean, uh, was not so much I mean, uh, a factor of growth in terms of volume. And Laurent, uh, the new uh, Topo Chico launch between Molson Coors and Coca-Cola, that seems to have gone off to a pretty strong start. Is Molson Coors the best uh, hard seltzer stock to own for a, for a hot vac summer? Yeah, so two things. I mean, um, you know, one of the, the, the reasons why we explain the, the growth of, uh, of gold flavors in, in seltzer is that uh, two demographics. I mean, I did under um, my, I mean, uh, the, uh, the sensor, I mean, it was African-American and Hispanic, about 10% of household penetration last year. And, and, and with bold flavor, but now with Topo Chico, which is really a, an Hispanic brand, 
uh, um, I mean, we are, I mean, uh, those brands are reaching out and this planet. And, and Topo Chico, for example, reached about 35% of household penetration with Hispanic consumers uh, last month. So that's, we think it's, uh, it could be, I mean, uh, the number three and number four brands uh, in, the, in the next, I mean, a uh, uh, few months. Now, um, is Molson Porsche the best, I mean, stock to own right now? Is the one with the most upside, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, Selzer is still a small part of their overall business. We we think that they will reach about 7% of market share this year um, with Topo Chico, Vizi, and, and for Selzer, plus food products, um, which for them, uh, it's a good, uh, it's a good really uh, factor to, to bounce back. I mean, they were, it's a company that in the US was declining 1% roughly in uh, pre-COVID, and we believe that we'll be growing um, you know, about 2% post-COVID thanks to Selzer, but also some premiumization they are doing. So, in terms of upside, uh, I mean, uh, we we like some as a as a gross investment, and we like I mean, uh, uh, most of course, uh, it's our best idea actually because it's uh, it's still a value play and there is uh, very little I mean, uh, risk but a lot of upside. Laurent Pondé, cheers! Thanks so much for speaking with us about the hard seltzer market today. Appreciate it. Laurent is with Guggenheim Partners.